God bless you today, for today is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to read Acts chapter 1, expository study Bible, so the notes included, King James Version. And as always, we ask God, in the mighty name of Jesus, to please bless us with the revelation of this word, so we can grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and also that this word will be hid in our hearts. Before we begin the reading, I just want to briefly mention that you're noticing that a lot of activity by the devil going on right now in plain sight, no longer in the shadows, no longer hiding, but in plain sight, national televised programming, just showing that the time is now. For the devil and all of his children to rise up and to deceive, kill, destroy who they may. And that's exactly what's happening. So if you are a parent with a child, you better be saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So your child can have protection. When you are a parent and you are unsaved, your child has no protection. And it's at your feet. As a parent, you must be saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That will grant you access to the protection for your child. You reject Jesus, then you leave your child with no protection. And it's on your head. So, in this world we live in, you see the children are being attacked head on by the devil and his minions. And so without that protection, what chance do you have? So the problem is sin. The only solution is Jesus Christ and him crucified. We need Jesus desperately. All right. Acts one. The former Tree ties have I made refers to the gospel of Luke, which was probably finished a year or so before the writing of this account called the Acts of the Apostles. O Theopolis, the same person addressed by Luke in that gospel, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach is the standard, the principle, and the foundation of the gospel. Unto the day in which he was taken up, the resurrection. After that, he threw the Holy Spirit, refers to the fact that the Spirit of God is a speaker and actor in this book. And as always, it is always God giving the word to the Holy Spirit, which in turn gives the word from God to the individual who is writing this down. Once again, nothing in this Bible came from a human being. Every single word came from God through the Holy Spirit to that individual. All right. Make no mistake about it. Had given commandments unto the apostles who he had, who had he, who he had chosen refers, refers to our Lord's ministry of some three and a half years, which the apostles witnessed to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Many people saw him after his resurrection and before his ascension, being seen of them 40 days from the time of the resurrection to the time of his ascension and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. It seems that much teaching was included during this period of time and being assembled together with them speaks of the time he ascended back to the father. This was probably the time of, of by, above 500, commanded them, not a suggestion, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, the side of the temple where the Holy Spirit would descend, but for the promise of the Father, spoke of the Holy Spirit, which had been promised by the Father, which said, He, you have heard of me, you have also heard me say these things. For John truly baptized with water, merely symbolized 
the very best baptism believers could receive before the day of Pentecost. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Spoke of the coming day of Pentecost, although Jesus did not use that term at the time. When they, therefore, were come together, they asked of him, saying, seemingly presents the last meeting before the ascension, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? He will later answer this question through the Apostle Paul. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. The Master is saying that it is not the business of the followers of Christ to know this information, but rather to occupy till I come. You know, think about it. What would be the result if God said, on this date, at this time, I am coming back? What would be the result? The overwhelming result would be, people would say, well, I'm going to live my life, do what I want to do, and if I'm alive at this time, then the day before, I'll go ahead and get right with God. People would put off the Lord. And of course, that would always end in tragedy. It's never going to work out for the individual who in their heart says, I will forsake the Lord today, but on my deathbed, then I will accept him. Um, that's a foolish thing to think. It's not going to happen for you. All right. Now, don't be confused, of course. Now, there are people that ha have been saved at the last minute, and there are people that will be saved. But if you purpose it in your heart to reject Jesus, thinking that, well, I'll just accept him on my deathbed, well, that's not a game I would play. So, all right. But you shall receive power, miracle working power, after the Holy Spirit has come, up, come, up, uh, has come upon you. It specifically states that this power is inherent the Holy Spirit and solely in his dominion. And you shall be witnesses. Doesn't mean witnessing to souls, but rather to give ones, to, to one giving ones all in every capacity for Christ, even to the laying down of one's life unto me. Without the baptism with the Holy Spirit, one cannot really know Jesus as one should. Both in Jerusalem all, and, all in, and all in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Proclaims the work of God as being worldwide. And when he had spoken these things, refers to his last instructions to his followers. While they beheld, he was taken up. Refers to him ascending before their very eyes. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Represents the Shekinah, glory of God, which enveloped Christ as he ascended. What a sight that was to see. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, these statements are important because they affirm his actual ascension testified to, to by eyewitnesses. Behold, two men stood by them in the white apparel. These two men were actually angels. Which also said, you mean of Galilee, you men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into the heaven? This does not mean that it was not only men who were present, but rather that this was a common term used for both men and women. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, refers to the same human body with the nail prints in his hands and feet, etc. Shall so come again in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven refers to the same place, which is the Mount of Olivet. Olive, Olivet. Olivet. Um, so, just as the angels said, as God told them to say, at the same way Jesus was taken away, he's going to come return. He's going to return that way. So, we know from Scripture that God has set aside a time that no man knows, no angel knows, the only one that knows is God, period. God knows the moment he's going to do it. Who knows when it's going to be but God. But we know from Scripture the sky is going to crack and open up. Now, that alone, mind-blowing, 
try to imagine the sky cracking open like an egg. And here comes Jesus in his glory. You, you what, what, what could I say? What a sight, what a sight it will be. And what, it, you can't even comprehend it. Like you, cause you know, we've heard thunder. We've heard strong thunder before, right? You know, thunderous thunder. We've heard that. We've seen lightning. But when the sky cracks, will you, will, whoever is alive during that time will have never heard such a sound as the sky cracking open. Oh, oh open. And whoever's alive will have not seen such a light as they will when they see the light of Jesus Christ, of his glory coming down. So every camera in the world will be pointed at it. They'll get the cameras rolling. They'll point at it. People will be watching. They will be dumbfounded. They won't know what to say, what to do. But it is Jesus and he's coming back. Which also say, uh, let's see, okay. All right. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, represents as stated the place of his ascent, which will also be the place of his descent, which is from which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey, represents a little over half a mile. And when they were come in, they went up in the upper room. It was probably the same room where they had eaten the Passover with Christ where abode both Peter and James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of uh, Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotus, and Judas, the brother of James. This Jew is also called Levinus and Thaddeus. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. Proclaims the manner in which these meetings were conducted. With the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, Concerns the women who followed Christ from Galilee and his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Peter uh, represents Peter taking the lead and said the number of names together were about 120. In essence, forms the beginning of the church. Men and brethren, the scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Judas, which has guided them, which was guide to them who took Jesus. Is derived from Psalm 69, 25, 28. For he was numbered with us and have attained part of his ministry. Means he was one of the apostles and chosen by the Lord. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Per, uh, refers to the Pharisees taking the blood money from Judas and buying his burying, burying place. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst and, his, and all his bowels gushed out. He committed suicide. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem. Actually, it means that it became known, insomuch that as the field is called that, that as that field is called in their proper tongue, um, Asodama, which is to say the field of blood, was also known as the Potter's Field, for it is written in the Book of Psalms, "Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein." The indication is that the name of Judas had been in the book of life, but had been blotted out because of his sin. And this bis hopperic, let another take, refers to his apostleship. Wherefore, of these men, which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among, among us, probably spoke of the 70, beginning from the baptism of John until the same day that he was taken up from us spans the entirety of the three and a half uh, years of the ministry of Christ. Must one be ordained to be a witness with us, with us of his resurrection? We learn from this that the resurrection of Christ from the dead in a cardinal doctrine of the gospel is a cardinal doctrine of the gospel. And the appointed two, Joseph called Barbarus, who was surnamed Justice and Matthias, they uh, they would present these two to the Lord for his choice. And they prayed, showed their utter, utter dependence on the Lord for leading and guidance, and said, You, Lord, which knows the hearts of all men, tell us where alone the truth can be found, 
show whether these two you have chosen, proclaims your desire for God's choice and his choice alone. So what an illustration this is. It doesn't say that they planned something. It doesn't say they reason amongst themselves. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't say they went to go ask others' opinions, seek counseling from someone else. It says, and they prayed. And they prayed asking what was God's choice. What wisdom? That's wisdom. That's knowledge. That's understanding. Just imagine praying and seeking what we should do with God telling us and leading us in what to do. Imagine that. The beginning should always be coming to the Lord with thanksgiving into prayer and seeking his will. 25. That he, may, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, the foundation of the church, from which Judas by transgression fell. It tells us plainly that Judas once knew the Lord for how he can fall from something to which one has never attained, that he might go to his own place. Self-will will take one to eternal hell, even as it did Judas. So once again, here are scriptures telling you that there is no such thing as once being saved, you're always saved no matter what. Do you think Jesus called Judas to be a disciple with Judas wanting to sell Jesus out for silver and gold? Of course not. But somewhere along the line, Judas made a choice to turn his eyes from the Lord and to turn his money and turn and turn his eyes on money in his own lust. And the devil was right there to support him. And his name was blotted out. So make no mistake about it. The same way you can only get saved is by having your faith in Jesus Christ and crucified is the only way you can stay saved. By having your faith in Jesus Christ and him crucified. So many people, they'll get saved and they'll put their faith in fasting or in Bible reading or in prayer or in their loved one, their, their church, so on and so on. And it's like I always say, was it the Bible that went to the cross? Was it fasting that went to the cross? Was it your church that went to the cross? What and who went to the cross? Jesus Christ alone went to the cross because he alone could pay the price. There's no substitute. That's why it is all about Jesus, period. That is the faith that God presented you, that you accepted, that got you saved. You are to fight to keep that faith in Jesus Christ. And him crucified. That's how you stay saved. It's just that simple. All right. And they gave forth their lots. Well, similar to the to the Urim and Thumma, uh Tumen, with which the disciples would have been familiar in the Lord in Old Testament times, gave leading to his people. And the lot fell upon Matthias. Probably means that the names of the two men were placed on two stones, pieces of parchment or wood, and then placed into an urn, which uh, with one lot drawn out. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Indicates that he was God's choice. So, all right, chapter one, and you know now had they took it upon themselves to make the choice. Most likely, out of the two, they got a 50-50 chance. 
But most likely they're going to choose the other one because that's what we do. We choose the other one. God knows exactly who to choose, what to do, where to go. Um, so, you know, God loves us so much that he wants the best for us. And what is the best for us is Jesus. And through Jesus, we can have access to the things of God, which are the best things. There's no comparison. There's no equal. And so that's what God wants for us. So as the world around us falls into abomination and hellfire, we can stand as lights with Jesus Christ in this dark world. The world is only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. As bad as it is now, and it is bad, it is going to continue to get far worse as the days go on, as God tarries it to be so. So the worst is yet to come. But fear not. Jesus said, fear not, because I have over, I have overcome the world, the flesh and the devil. He's made the devil his footstool. So be of good joy. No need to fear. All right. Well, God bless you.